Ladies and gentlemen, our topic today is focus on what you are doing. Now, that might sound simple, even obvious, but I assure you, mastering this concept can be the difference between mediocrity and excellence, between failure and success. Let's start with a fundamental truth. Your focus determines your reality. What you choose to concentrate on, what you direct your attention towards, that's what shapes your life. It's as simple and as profound as that. You see, in this world of constant distractions, of endless notifications and unlimited information at our fingertips, the ability to focus has become a rare and valuable skill. It's like a superpower in today's fast pace. Always, and like any superpower, it can transform your life if you learn to harness it correctly. Now, I'm not just talking about concentration in the moment, although that's certainly part of it. I'm talking about a broader, more encompassing kind of focus. I'm talking about the kind of focus that shapes your days, your weeks, your years. The kind of focus that determines the trajectory of your entire life. Think about it this way. Have you ever watched a master craftsman at work? A skilled carpenter, perhaps, or a talented artist? Notice how they seem to become one with their work. They're not checking their phone every five minutes. They're not worrying about what's for dinner or what's on TV tonight. They're completely absorbed in what they're doing. That's the kind of focus I'm talking about. But here's the thing. That level of focus doesn't just happen. It's not something you're born with. It's a skill, a habit that you develop over time. And like any skill, it requires practice, dedication, and consistency. So how do we develop this kind of focus? Well, it starts with understanding a simple but powerful principle. You become what you focus on. If you focus on problems, you become a problem-minded. If you focus on solutions, you become a solution-oriented person. If you focus on growth and improvement, you become a person who's constantly evolving and getting this principle applies to every area of your life. In your career, if you focus on doing your best work, on constantly improving your skills, on adding value to your company and your clients, you'll inevitably rise to the top. In your relationships, if you focus on being a good friend, a loving partner, a supportive family member, you'll cultivate deep and meaningful connections. In your personal development, if you focus on learning, on challenging yourself, on expanding your horizons, you'll grow in ways you never thought possible. But here's the catch. You can't focus on everything. You have to choose. And that choice, my friends, is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Because what you choose to focus on will shape your life more than almost anything. Now I can already hear some of you thinking, but Jim, there are so many things demanding my attention. How can I possibly focus on just one thing? And that's a valid concern. We live in a world that's constantly pulling us in a hundred different directions. But here's the truth. If everything is important, then nothing is important. If you try to focus on everything, you end up focusing on nothing. That's why it's crucial to prioritize. To decide what truly matters to you. To determine what aligns with your values your goals, your vision for your life, and then to focus relentlessly on those things. Let me share a little secret with you. The most successful people I've ever met, they're not necessarily the smartest or the most talented or the luckiest, but they all have one thing in common. They know how to focus. They know how to block out the noise, ignore the distractions, and concentrate all their energy on what really matters. Think about it like this. Imagine you're holding a magnifying glass on a sunny day. If you move the glass around, letting the sunlight hit different spots, nothing much happens. But if you hold it steady, focusing the sunlight on one specific point, what happens? That's right, it starts to burn. That's the power of focus. It can ignite your potential, your creativity, your success, but focusing isn't just about working harder. It's about working smarter. It's about directing your energy and attention to the tasks and activities that will yield the greatest results. 
It's about understanding the principle of leverage of getting maximum output from minimum input. Here's an example. Let's say you're trying to grow a business. You could spend your time and energy on a hundred different tasks, spreading yourself thin, making a little progress in a lot of areas. Or you could identify the one or two activities that will have the biggest impact on your business growth and focus intensely on those. Maybe it's perfecting your sales pitch. Maybe it's developing a new product. Maybe it's building strategic partnerships. Whatever it is, by focusing your energy there, you'll see much greater results than if you tried to do everything at once. The same principle applies in your personal life. Maybe you want to improve your health. Instead of trying to overhaul your entire lifestyle overnight, focus on one key habit. Maybe it's drinking more water, or getting an extra hour of sleep, or taking a daily walk. Master that one habit. Make it a part of your routine, and then move on to the next. You see, focus isn't about doing more things. It's about doing the right things and doing them well. It's about quality over quantity. It's about depth over breadth. Now, I want to address something important here. Some of you might be thinking, but Jim, doesn't focusing on one thing mean I'm limiting myself? Shouldn't I be trying to broaden my horizons? And that's a great question. The answer is it depends on your goals. If your goal is to be a jack of all trades, to have a broad base of knowledge and skills, then yes, you might want to spread your focus around. But if your goal is to excel in a particular area, to become truly great at something, then intense focus is the way to go. Think about it like this. A laser is just focused light. But that focus gives it incredible power. It can cut through steel, perform delicate surgeries, even measure the distance to the moon. That's the power of focused energy. And you have that same potential within you. But here's the thing. Focus requires discipline. It requires the ability to say no to good opportunities so you can say yes to great ones. It requires the courage to stick to your path even when others don't understand or support your choices. I'm reminded of a story about Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors of all time. His personal pilot once asked him how to achieve his goals. Buffett told him to make a list of 25 things he wanted to accomplish. Then he asked him to circle the five most important ones. Those are your real goals, Buffett said. The other 20, avoid them at all costs. They're what distract you from your true priorities. That's the power of focus. It's not just about what you choose to do. It's also about what you choose not to do. It's about eliminating distractions, saying no to time wasters, and ruthlessly prioritizing what truly matters. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but Jim, my life is already so busy, I have so many responsibilities. How can I possibly focus on just a few things? And I understand that. Life is complex. We all have multiple roles and responsibilities. But here's the thing. Even within a busy life, you can practice focus. It's about being present in whatever you're doing. When you're at work, be fully at work. When you're with your family, be fully with your family. When you're exercising, focus entirely on your workout. It's about giving your full attention to the task at hand rather than trying to multitask or letting your mind wander. You see, multitasking is a myth. Our brains aren't wired to focus on multiple things at once. What we call multitasking is really just rapid task switching, and it's incredibly inefficient. Studies have shown that it can reduce productivity by as much as four. It's like throwing away nearly half of your working hours. Instead of trying to do multiple things at once, try batching similar tasks together. Set aside specific times for checking emails, for making phone calls for creative work. And when you're doing those tasks, give them your full attention. You'll be amazed at how much more you can accomplish. But focusing isn't just about productivity. It's also about quality of life. When you're fully present in what you're doing, you experience life more deeply. You notice details you might otherwise miss. You form stronger connections with the people around you. You find more joy in simple moments. Think about the last time you were truly absorbed in an activity. 
Maybe you were reading a great book or working on a challenging project or having a deep conversation with a friend. Remember how time seemed to fly by? How you felt energized rather than drained. That's the state psychologist call flow, and it's closely related to focus. When you're in a state of flow, you're not just more productive. You're also happier and more fulfilled. Now, and I want to address something important here. Some of you might be thinking, but Jim, what about relaxation? What about downtime? Isn't it important to let our minds wander sometimes? And you're absolutely right. Focus isn't about being on 24. Seven, it's about being intentional with your time and energy. In fact, regular periods of relaxation and mind wandering are crucial for maintaining your ability to focus. They allow your brain to recharge, to make new connections, to process information. The key is to make these periods intentional rather than letting them happen by default when you should be focusing on something else. So yes, schedule time for relaxation. Make space in your life for hobbies, for socializing, for simply doing nothing. But when you do these things, do them fully. Be present in your relaxation just as you're present in your work. Now, let's talk about some practical strategies for improving your focus. The first step is to identify your priorities. What are the most important goals in your life right now? What activities will have the biggest impact on achieving those goals? Once you've identified these, make them the center of your focus. Next, create an environment that supports focus. This might mean setting up a dedicated workspace using noise-canceling headphones or using apps that block distracting websites. It's about making it as easy as possible for you to concentrate on what matters. Another powerful strategy is to use time blocking. This involves setting aside specific periods of time for focused work and protecting those times fiercely. During these blocks, turn off notifications, close unnecessary browser tabs, and commit to working on one specific task. It's also crucial to take care of your physical health. Your brain needs fuel to focus, so make sure you're eating well, staying hydrated, and getting enough sleep. Regular exercise can also do wonders for your ability to concentrate. Meditation and mindfulness practices can be incredibly helpful in improving your focus. These techniques train your brain to stay present and resist distractions. Even just a few minutes of mindfulness practice each day can make a significant difference. Remember, developing focus is a skill. It takes time and practice. You'll have good days and bad days. The key is to keep at it to make it a habit, a way of life. Now I want to talk about something that's closely related to focus, and that's the concept of deep work. This term, coined by author Cal Newport, refers to the ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding task. It's the kind of work that creates real value, pushes your abilities to their limits, and is hard to replicate. In today's world, the ability to do deep work is becoming increasingly rare and increasingly valuable. As more and more jobs become automated, the skills that will be most in demand are those that require deep focus and concentration, things like complex problem solving, creative thinking, and strategic planning. So by developing your ability to focus, you're not just improving your current performance, you're also future-proofing your career, making yourself valuable in an economy that increasingly rewards deep work. But deep work isn't just about career success, it's also about personal fulfillment. There's a deep satisfaction that comes from losing yourself in meaningful work, from pushing your limits, and seeing what you're truly capable of. It's about the pride of craftsmanship, the joy of creation, the thrill of solving a difficult problem. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Jim, my job doesn't allow for deep work. I'm constantly interrupted by emails, meetings, and urgent tasks. And I understand that. Many of us work in environments that seem designed to prevent focus. But even in these situations, there are ways to carve out time for deep work. It might mean coming in early or staying late to have some quiet time at the office. It might mean negotiating with your boss for a no meetings day each week. It might mean setting up clear boundaries around when you're available for interruptions and when you need uninterrupted focus time. Remember, 
Your ability to do deep work is a valuable asset to your employer. By explaining the benefits of focused work time, you may find that your organization is more supportive than you expected. But focus isn't just about work. It's about how you approach every aspect of your life. When you're with your family, are you really present? Or is your mind on work? When you're exercising, are you focused on your form and your breath? Or are you just going through the motions? When you're eating, are you savoring each bite? Or are you scrolling through your phone? You see, focus is about quality of life. It's about experiencing each moment fully, about bringing your whole self to whatever you're doing. It's about living intentionally rather than reactively. Think about the last time you had a really good conversation with someone. Chances are it was good because both of you were fully present, fully engaged. You weren't checking your phones or thinking about other things. You were focused on each other, on the exchange of ideas and emotions. That's the power of focus in relationships. The same principle applies to learning and personal growth. When you approach a new skill or subject with focus, you learn more quickly and deeply. You make connections that you might otherwise miss. You retain information better. For example, let's say you're learning a new language. If you study in short, focus bursts, given the task your full attention, you'll make much more progress than if you try to learn while also watching TV or scrolling through social media. Now, I want to address a common misconception about focus. Some people think that being focused means being rigid or inflexible, but that's not true at all. In fact, true focus requires flexibility and adaptability. You see, the world is constantly changing. New opportunities arise, unexpected challenges appear. If you're too rigidly focused on one path, you might miss important shifts in your environment. The key is to stay focused on your overall goals and values while remaining flexible about the specific path to get there. Think of it like driving a car. You're focused on your destination, but you're also constantly adjusting your steering, your speed, your route based on the conditions around you. That's the kind of focus we're talking about, intense but adaptable. Now let's talk about something that's closely related to focus, and that's the concept of passion. When you're truly passionate about something, focus comes naturally. You don't have to force yourself to pay attention. You're drawn in, captivated. That's why it's so important to find work and activities that align with your passions. When you're doing something you truly care about, focus becomes effortless. Time flies by. You enter that state of flow we talked about earlier. But here's the thing. Passion isn't always something you find. Sometimes it's something you develop through focused effort. The more you learn about a subject, the more skilled you become at an activity, the more passionate you often become about it. So don't wait for passion to find you. Choose something important, something meaningful, and focus on it. Dive deep. Learn everything you can. Push yourself to improve. You may find that passion grows out of your focused effort. Now I want to address something that many of you may be struggling with, digital distractions. We live in an age of unprecedented access to information and entertainment. At any moment, we can check our email, scroll through social media, watch a video, play a game, all from a device that fits in our pocket. And while these technologies have brought many benefits, they've also created new challenges for our ability to focus. Our brains are wired to seek novelty, and these digital distractions provide an endless stream of new stimuli. It's like trying to focus while someone is constantly tapping you on the shoulder, saying, hey, look at this. So how do we deal with this? Well, it starts with awareness. Notice how often you reach for your phone out of habit. Pay attention to how you feel after spending time on social media or watching videos. Are you energized and focused or scattered and drained? Once you're aware of your habits, you can start to make intentional choices. Maybe you decide to turn off notifications on your phone. Maybe you use apps that limit your access to certain websites during work hours. Maybe you establish a rule of no phones at the dinner table or in the bedroom. Remember, these devices are tools. They should serve you, not control you. 
By setting boundaries and being intentional about your use of technology, you can reclaim your ability to focus. Now let's talk about the role of rest in maintaining focus. It might seem counterintuitive, but taking regular breaks is crucial for sustained focus. Our brains aren't designed to concentrate intensely for hours on end. We work best in focused sprints, followed by periods of rest and recovery. This is where techniques, like the Pomodoro method, can be helpful. This involves working in focused 25-minute blocks, followed by short breaks. By alternating between periods of intense focus and brief rest, you can maintain high levels of concentration for longer periods. But it's not just about short breaks. It's also about getting enough sleep, taking regular vacations, and giving yourself time to recharge. When you're well rested and refreshed, you'll find it much easier to focus when you need to. Remember, rest isn't a luxury or a sign of weakness. It's a crucial part of maintaining peak performance. Now, as we wrap up, I want to leave you with this thought. Focus is a choice. In every moment, you have the power to choose what you direct your attention towards. And those choices, repeated over time, shape the course of your life. So choose wisely. Choose to focus on what truly matters to you. Choose to be present in each moment. Choose to give your best effort to whatever you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, mastering the art of focus won't happen overnight. It's a lifelong journey. There will be setbacks and challenges along the way but I promise you, the rewards are worth it. When you learn to focus on what you're doing, you'll not only be more productive and successful, but you'll also experience life more deeply and find greater fulfillment in your daily activities. So starting today, make a commitment to your, commit to focusing on what truly matters. Commit to being present in each moment. Commit to giving your full attention to whatever you're doing. Because when you focus on what you're doing, you open the door to extraordinary possibilities. Thank you.